Do you like a good treasure hunt? Let me share my tips and tricks of thrifting handbags that you do not want to miss. Stay tuned. Hello, my name is Andrea. Welcome to my channel and thanks for joining me in the Babe Cave today. Yes, you heard right. If you like a good treasure hunt, especially for handbags, you need to hear my tips and tricks of how I thrift my handbags and accessories. So first thing that I have learned on my own some of these tips that I'm about to share with you just based on my experience. So if you have more tips, I will be glad to hear them down in the comments. So number one, download the Google app and you'll notice that I'll put a picture up here that there is a camera button that you really need this app for that camera. So that's the first thing you want to do before even leaving the house. Two, thrifting can be frustrating. <laughs> At certain times of year, you get more for less or you get more bags thrifted at certain times of year. For instance, for me, I notice I have better luck at the end of December to the beginning of January. I can find a whole lot of bags because people are going through their closets. They just got new bags for Christmas and they want to donate the ones they're not using anymore. And that is a prime time, the after Christmas, you want to go to your thrift store. Uh, sometimes the after February, it's a little slow. There's Nova. <laughs> and you'll you'll get frustrated so wait a couple weeks go again i mean i don't always find stuff when i go to the thrift store but i just notice the certain times of year and also when people are spring cleaning they're cleaning out their closets getting rid of handbags so maybe you know, I haven't had the best of luck lately. I've, I have found a couple that I'm going to show you that I haven't showed that are, are, are for sale. <laughs> like, for instance, uh, I found a... I don't typically buy Vera Bradley anymore. I've learned my lesson. They just don't resell for anything for anybody. <laughs> but I did pick up this one. It is a Harry Potter exclusive and it's also the sling bag. And these are selling for pretty good profit. So I did pick up this recently. So, so time of year is important. Before you even go to the thrift store, you need to sign up for their emails. Because when you sign up for their emails, you will get coupons. And you want to go on those days that say 50% off shoes and accessories. Accessories means wallets, purses, clothes, all of the things. So those are the important days when you get 50% off. And they always say excludes green tag or excludes orange tag. So there's always the exceptions to the 50% off, but try to go on those days especially and early. Go early if you can because those things, the coaches and the more prominent brands will get picked over or they'll end up behind the shelf where they overprice everything. But if you go on the 50% off day, Typically at my store, they are behind the counter. Those are 50% off as well. So sometimes those can be very profitable behind the, behind the counter purses. Next thing, know the current trends. And what I mean is, 
is it belt bags? Is it mini bags? Is it satchels? Is it hobo trends? Like what are people carrying? And that Google app that I mentioned, uh, I'll, when I go to the thrift store, I take a picture or my husband, he's my helper. <laughs> I'll pull the bags and he takes pictures and tells me what they sold for you know, the condition of those bags that sold, how long were they on the market for? That's important too. Sometimes when you thrift, you will have a time period of where nothing sells <laughs> and that's normal. Just like any busi business, it ebbs and flows and you make some money, you make sales and you don't make sales. It just depends <laughs> and so anyway, that's why we need the Google app because taking pictures of the bag, how much, what percentage do you want to make? If you're buying a $10 thrifted item, I typically want it to sell after fees because a lot of these eBay, Mercari, Poshmark have fees that a seller has to pay. And you want to know what's your profit margin that you want that you're comfortable with. If you're buying a $10 bag, do you want to make $50? Then you probably, you're going to need, you know, to list it at 60 and are these selling for that amount? So you do your research, always important. <laughs> the next tip is what I touched on, you know, you're not always going to see every expensive brand behind the counter because they make mistakes and they put some Brightons in the normal purse areas. They've put, you know, Vera Bradley, which is usually, like I said, not a good re resell brand to get. Uh, they, I have thrifted a Tory Burch tote, which I cleaned the corners up and sold. <laughs> I'll pop up the picture of what I'm talking about. Yeah, that was in the normal purse area and it was behind something. So you got to dig sometimes. And then one time uh, I'll pop up this picture. I sold a Mark Jacobs wallet that my husband found. And it was just right in front of the wallet. Typically, I dig through all the wristlets, all the wallets. I have found this one at uh, Goodwill and it was only a couple of bucks. So it was hidden though, and it even has the hang tag and it's pretty navy blue sequined also listed. But yeah, you sometimes have to dig and you have to be patient. <laughs> and like I said before, research, look on Poshmark, look on eBay, look on any secondary market. Are those items or accessories or bags selling right now? And if they're not, and if they're too high of a price for what you want to, your return on investment is, just leave it there. My next tip is check every strap corner inside uh, of the bag, every pocket for snags, for rips, for piping showing, for any kind of scuff marks. Now, I have picked up some that were a little rough. I sell, resell Kipling's really good at a, my boutique I sell locally and those are pretty easy to clean up and I've sold a lot of Kipling bags and uh, so just because it's a little dirty doesn't mean you can't clean it, condition it, make it look brand new again. So this is an important tip. Just because it's not your style or what you would pick out or your color or you know it doesn't mean that other people aren't going to want that style or that color or that brand that you're not interested in so again research <laughs> you know thrifting to me is a way that I can make extra money uh, but it's also like a treasure hunt like I mentioned at the beginning it's about finding hidden treasures that people just donated and that can have a second life. And I, I sell bags and accessories at the going rate, okay? Whatever a coach 
Rowan is selling for in that print or that design, that's what I'm selling it for. So if I buy it for 10, I'm not gonna sell it for 10. <laughs> Just, you know, it's a, it's a treasure hunt and I've went weeks where I don't find anything. And then I find, you know, a few weeks later, I'll find like three things. I also, um, you know, this is I, another tip. I also have sold, which this one's not for sale. This was my gift from Nancy. Uh, if you see any Christian Dior, I've sold a makeup brush holder. I've sold, you know, you know how you get the free item with Chanel or Christian Dior makeup pouch or perfume samples. I've sold probably three of those. <laughs> They're not leather, but people like the name or the logo and they're worth picking up for the right price. And percentage wise, it's pretty good because they don't price those very high. Mine have been around four to five, sometimes a little like eight, but I can flip them for 35. So it's all about knowing what to look for prices that you can make money on because those ones behind the counter typically they're doing the same thing and they're taking a picture of it they're seeing what the sales are and that's what they're they're listing it to consumers at a better rate but for a reseller and a thrifter those prices are not going to make you any money. <laughs> it's going to make them money. And uh, that's why it's important to go on those days where you get the emails that say 50% off. Yes, go. <laughs> and try to go early. I have a bad habit of going at like 3 in the afternoon. <laughs> and people drop off and donate throughout the whole day. So that doesn't mean that you're gonna miss out on anything because someone could have just dropped off a coach purse and you just happened to be there. It's all by chance. <laughs> I found a Brighton bag that was hidden behind big bags. It was brand new condition. I probably made $100 on it. So, and it was a silver metallic crossbody and those sell for three to $400. So. There are hidden gems, definitely in a thrift store. <laughs> so I hope these tips and tricks of mine help you if you're interested in thrifting handbags and accessories. And my favorite thrift, which I kept, is my Ralph Lauren Asheville Satchel. I, I uh, just loved the style of this bag, and it is big, but... $17 is what I ended up paying and these go for around 200 on the resale market. So I did really well. I try not to keep my thrifted items, but this I couldn't get off my mind. So it's really fun to thrift. If you, I think there's been a stigma in the years past that, ew, gross, that's someone else's trash, you know, but it's not. There is some brands that you see donated that don't even waste your time. Don't get Rosetti <laughs> if you're looking to profit, that is. If you're looking to have a bag, then go for it. Go on those half price days and you can get a bag for seven or eight bucks. Um, but for me, why I thrift mostly <laughs> is to find those hidden treasures and give them new life and pass them on again. So anyway, I appreciate all of you for watching. If you like this type of video, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. It's all about affordable, coach, Dooney. I have some luxury pieces, but I'm not really spending on anything designer luxury, I should say, designer brands. I, it's just not worth it to me anymore. Times are a-changing, <laughs> and I love to thrift. Anyway, and don't forget to hit the bell so you won't f miss my future videos. And thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.